Good morning, Mike. Well, it wasn't until you got here. It's been strangely quiet. Well, Ron, I heard you tuning up. I think you're ready to, uh, I think you're just about ready for your Mars mission. Yeah. Well, I think Mars, I'll wait till uh, Elon Musk's volunteers with their Neuralinks take the trip. Well, we'll have to see. I think uh, my crystal ball says his future isn't looking very good. Yeah, I think that's one trip I'll pass on. Well, <clears throat> I, uh, I'm not sure what conditions are like, but it's not noisy. The band is pretty quiet, so uh, I don't know. We'll see. Well, <clears throat> My big news is, uh, next week, I go back to uh, being under the knife. Gosh, uh, more new parts to come. Well, congratulations. Uh, let me save the specifics, uh, if you wish, for, uh, for an eyeball, but, uh, well, you want to get all tuned up for the big trip back home? Yeah, <clears throat> it was that same issue with my arms going numb. Well, it, it happened again, and, uh, yeah, I went into ER, did an MRI, and, uh, and no surprise, uh, the MRI showed up a lot more details on my, on my neck. So I went to the spinal surgeon. He got me a, a spot ASAP, and so, yeah, I won't be a bobblehead in it for a while. Actually, probably not much at all. But, uh, yeah, anyhow, they're going to have to go ahead and fuse three discs in my neck. So, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting younger piece by piece. Uh, you know, a two-year-old hip, four-month-old hip, brand new half of a neck. But, anyhow... Uh, I'm glad it finally showed up, and uh, they finally caught it and took the right picture. So there you go. Uh, <clears throat> the miracle of medicine, and as long as you've got the money for it. Well, uh, my gosh, uh, I would think probably laying underneath that... Uh, that certain military vehicle probably maybe led to the uh, diagnosis because you've uh, you've been doing a lot of wrench work. Yeah, it um, um, it probably didn't help much. Actually, what happened was I went to uh, um, you know I was doing the regular physical therapy for a couple of months and that was over. And then my doc said, uh, hey, you know I uh, I've tried this uh, manual method physical therapy. It's almost like acupressure kind of a thing. Uh, somewhere between acupressure and chiropractor. Well, <coughs> first two sessions went for, fine. Third session, I woke up the next morning and uh, yeah, I had another one of those incidents, dropped a cup of coffee, and uh, the left arm has still been weak ever since then. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> It wasn't going to disappear, and it's lucky. I mean, it was like, uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's like the other CT scan showed. It. it looks like the typical neck of a, you know, of a 110-year-old. Nothing odd about it. <laughs> but, <clears throat> yeah, so we got to get any wrench work done on that. I told Larry, we got to get the rest of that thing going here in another, uh, in, uh, in another nine days before... Uh, before I'm going to be uh, stuck uh, uh, not riding a creeper. Uh, W7MS, is this going to uh, potentially interfere with your trip to uh, Plymouth and the vehicle meet? Uh, yeah, I'm afraid so. So, anyhow, there we go. Um, yeah, I'd even forgotten all about that. So, well, I guess we're not going to do any expensive. It's probably going to save us a lot of money. We're not going to be buying any expensive parts. 
Well, it gives your, uh, you know, it, it well eliminates a, t a chance for social interaction and forming all those relationships with uh, the folks with the uh, golden chest of parts. Yeah. <clears throat> well. Yeah, I don't think Larry. Larry would not. Uh, he wouldn't. Wouldn't bother going by himself. So. Yeah. Guess I will miss out on that. Unless. Uh, Unless something else happens and uh, uh, surgery gets, but if the surgery gets canceled much more or canceled or delayed, then it's going to mess up the Portugal trip. So I'm, you know, I'm I'm barely going to make it uh, being okay uh, ambulatory and under my own power uh, with a lot of restrictions. But in fact, I'll need someone to carry my luggage for me. Um, you know, uh, I can offer. Uh, uh, if you want to offer your services to me, I might buy you a ticket. A round trip to Flores. Well, that's an offer that's uh, hard to refuse, but uh, I don't think you're serious. But I, I, I think things will work out one way or another. At least, uh, at least you're getting it done. Now, here's somebody zero beating the frequency. So uh, maybe that's uh, Chuck, our net control station for this morning, and. Uh, I can't wait to hear about uh, what he found with his uh, radiator issue. Not steam radiator, but RF radiator, W7MS. That wasn't me, but W6MQI. Well, hi, Dave. Sorry to, I, I was sorry to see your, uh, your teletype net was canceled due to a conflict with the swap meet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I noticed Paul... Uh, replied to uh, Nick's um, um, post about not being net control. Not quite sure what he was trying to say. There was no text in his reply. Yeah, I saw that too. I thought might, he might be volunteering, but I'm thinking it's, uh, uh, you know, he only receives, he doesn't transmit. I've only heard him once ever. And that was a long time ago on the evening, uh, Andy's evening now. Yeah, I used to check into this, but it's been a number of years, but uh, great signal, and I'm running just the military gear, nothing exotic or weird, but I was going to spring a weird on this morning, but uh, decided I better uh, better stick with the TCS gear. Well, sounding good, and Ron, you're sounding good too. Sorry to hear about, uh, kind of came in towards the tail end of what you're talking about there. doesn't sound good, though. Yeah, okay, Dave. Yeah, signal sound clear, and uh, well, if you missed the clatter net, I guess that meant at least you got some sleep. You didn't have to get up in the wee hours of the morning. And uh, yeah, you know, that's something I've only had. Uh, I had a Model 100 in 1968. I used it on the Mars net on uh, uh, 2 meter AM ready. That was it. Um, yeah, well, all I can say is I'm really glad that uh, I'm getting it done here instead of, you know, over there. If it was over there, I, you know, I'd be, uh, I'd be lucky to come back uh, in, uh, in David Hawking's uh, used uh, wheelchair. So, so what happened to you? Something happened in your in your neck, was it? Yeah, yeah, it's what happened last year. I was only there a couple of weeks, and I had this weird thing where both arms dropped. Um, and um, within 30 seconds or a minute, uh, the feeling came back, and the strength came back, and that was it. And I've had I had one or one more episode back there, and then yeah, I had to go through the socialized healthcare system and and it was going to say well wait for wait four months for a cat scan and then i went to a private hospital and they showed up all the problems on my neck and so i've been going to physical therapy and the doctor i was try that first and then yeah then i had a a much worse incident uh yeah a week a week and a half ago so and uh kind of left the left arm still it works fine, but you can tell it's weak. So, yeah, the, those MRIs, they show up a lot more details, I guess, for soft 
tissue. So yeah, it showed that um, <clears throat> I, I need an intervention ASAP. So there you go. Uh, I will be like the children of Israel in the desert, a stubborn and stiff-necked people. I already had stubborn, now I have stiff neck. But, uh, yeah, anyhow, so hey, it's, it's be glad to, to get it done. And uh, uh, yeah, the surgeon said, well, I've done over 2,000 of these, to which I responded, on the same guy? Well, you're not going to experiment with me, buddy. And he actually saw the humor in that and uh, said, no, it was different people, so it ought to be okay. But uh, I think afterwards, the recuperation is... Well, the limit—I don't—the limitations are really bad for, you know. I don't know if I be, might not be able to drive for a month. That'd kill me. But, but Mike has offered his services to be driving Miss Daisy, didn't you? <laughs> and you six are standing by for the real net. Well, a few comments, uh, Ron. Well, I guess when you're out in the desert, remember to uh, put the pebbles on the ground uh, so you can mark the trail. As you're uh, as you're lost out there, and uh, also was the uh, acupressure guy's first name Carl? Because I have a story from WB7SKM, who was a machine operator at the Hamilton Standard. He had an injury and went through uh, workers' uh, comp and retraining and became a uh, chiropractor, which was really scary. W7MS. <laughs> A uh, ham come chiro chiropractor. <laughs> yeah, actually, this is called, what was it called? The manual method physical therapy. But it really is, um, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's a lot like chiropractor, but it's like, it's mostly just uh, pushing pushing bones uh, and muscles, uh, you know, back in place or in different places. I don't know. It didn't really seem like, you know, total voodoo. I mean, she didn't like have a, you know, a cloth bag of chicken bones waving over my head as I re re recited my mantra. So it, it made, you know, it actually, it seemed to uh, give me more range of motion the first two times in the last treatment than it was like, uh-oh, that wasn't good. So, no, um, man, I don't know if I'd go to a ham for uh, for any uh, any <coughs> any medical procedures. All right, NU6F, standing by. I work for food, Ron. Okay, work for food. <laughs> work for food, and, and maybe even get your round-trip ticket to the Azores. Good morning. You work for food, my huh, day. <laughs> did you see me? You didn't see me. Maybe they did the other day. I, I was out on the corner screaming, we'll work for a magic marker and a piece of cardboard, K0DWC. Have you been to uh, Grifter School? Yeah, hey, just like my dogs, I'm food motivated. Yeah, well, if you really want to make, if you want to get that magic marker and the uh, and the cardboard, make sure to have a dog tied on an old lamp cord with you, uh, and uh, the combination will at least get the first couple of offerings. <laughs> yeah, I have no kids. Okay. Well, I've got you guys down on the sheet. Uh, Looks like there's only, well, right now, anyway, looks like there's only four of us, so, uh, <laughs> uh, anybody wants to check in early in the next few minutes, uh, come on now. W6SSP, WA7YBS. WA6OPE. Okay. Well, good morning. Henry, WA7YBS, I got you in the four spot, bud. And uh, number five is uh, Bill, N6BCT. And uh, in the six spot is Tom, WA6OPE. So uh, anybody else is going uh, to check in a minute or two early, be number seven, you can come now. W6SSP.
Good morning, Steve. I got you on the sheet there, my friend. Uh, W6SSP. And anybody want to be number eight? Come now. Okay. Well, I think we got enough to start here this morning. Well, uh, good morning to everybody. Um, I've been listening here for a few minutes. And uh, so far, everybody's got a good good signal. Uh, no problems over here. Uh, it's got a little bit of buzzing, but uh, it's not uh, it's negligible. But uh, anyway, um, this is the Vintage Military Radio Net, and I'm Chuck, K0DWC, and I'll be in this control this morning. And we're going 3.974 megacycles. In his military radio net, his roundtable AM net provides an opportunity <coughs> excuse me, for licensed hands to operate their vintage military radio gear on the air. Military gear is encouraged, so it's certainly not a requirement. Check-ins will be given a number that can be used to the end. I will post check-ins at the end of each round of paper session. If anyone has anything to say or a want, please mention during your turn in the round table session. So, uh, the order that I've heard people uh, is as follows. Uh, in the number one spot is Mike, that's seven MS. In the two spot is Ron, NU6F. In the three spot is Dave, W6MQI. In the four spot is Henry, WA7YBS. In the five spot is Bill. N6BCT. In the sixth spot is Tom, WA6OPE. And in the number seven spot is Steve, W6SSP. And I'll make a quick call out uh, for number eight. If there's anybody out there, please come down. Okay, nothing heard. So uh, anyway, uh, good morning again, and uh, we we are on the ART-13 uh, this morning. And, uh, I'm running the uh, R-45 ARR-7. Uh, conditions are good enough. I can run that bad boy uh, here this morning. But I've got a I've got a backup with the R-3 in the uh, loop antenna, just in case. And uh, D-104 amplified mic and. Um, 200 watts and an inverted beam. That's my run that is standard net control station. So, uh, without further ado, we will go over to Reno, the voice of Reno, W7MS K0 DWC. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, well, thanks, Chuck. And I did hear that another carrier in there, but maybe somebody was touching up. Uh, K0 DWC W7MS and the uh, Sunday morning military Nevada net, Milrad, whatever, uh, Mike and Reno. Good reception from all. And uh, the former voice of Reno, because of course we know that uh, my neighbor across the street is the most recent voice of Reno. <laughs> so. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the setup, Chuck, on that, and also waiting for any uh, comments on your uh, antenna issues and the resolution. Uh, this morning, running the uh, TCS set, the TCS 11 Collins contract, uh, reworked uh, post-war into its uh, beautiful gray finish, and the TCS uh, 12, I guess. Uh, Apparently, uh, a Magnavox contract spun off to Collins Radio Company. Uh, it was interesting how that game was played for, I guess, uh, counting purposes. But uh, in distributing the wealth in the uh, in the uh, contract business. But uh, good signals, and of course the 30S1, about 250 watts a carrier. And uh, anxious to hear what else, uh, what other radios uh, and devices are being uh, run this morning. But this sounded great, Chuck. And uh, with that, We'll run it over to Ron, NU6F, W7MS. Okay, good deal. Hey, stand by. At least I heard that other carrier, too. Was there somebody else there?
Okay, they had their chance. All right, Mike, and uh, on the gray TCS, I'm glad you said that because I really couldn't tell from here which color it was, but uh, all right. And uh, I'm on the uh, uh, Ron Lemon Valley, just north of Golden Valley, and uh, a hoot and a holler and a stone's throw from the original voice of Reno. Uh, on the TCS, 300 watts carrier, and listening on the uh, BC348L Belmont radio, and uh, the 170 foot long wire, and uh, E104 mic. And, and that's it. Okay, with that, back down a little more. My assigned driver waiting for his paycheck, W6MQI and U6F. Alrighty, Ron. I'm there. <laughs> it's W6MQI. Good morning, all. All stations are sounding good. The band's really quiet this morning. I tried to use the TCS this morning, not the TCS, the uh, TCK this morning, and uh, um, there's something uh, buzzing inside the power supply. It was, uh, whatever it was, I couldn't uh, even uh, hear anything on the receiver, so I'm going to have to uh, track that down. So I am on uh, the over level, the ART-13. Just keeps plugging along. And listening on the uh, Collins R390A receiver. And I'm using a D104 microphone with the uh, ART13. And weather here is clear. Had some really nasty weather earlier in the week. Snowed in the hills here. I'm sure it's snowed over in uh, Nevada. And uh, we actually had frost yesterday more. Actually, a pretty good frost, in fact. Um, kind of surprising. So that's that's about it here for now. So over to uh, to Henry WA7YBS W6MQI. Okay, Dave W6MQI WA7YBS. Well, good morning to all. Good signals from everybody and. Uh, so far, everybody's sounding good. Yeah, we did get a little snow, but you know, it really didn't stick. It, it, it snowed a lot, but you know, when it melts instantly, when it hits the ground, well, it's not too much of a problem. But uh, it was plenty cold, that's for sure. Yesterday was, uh, God, it was approaching the teens. I think it was 23 or something like that. This morning's 27. But at least it's partially clear today, so that's uh, that's an improvement. Well, I'm on the uh, the Viking One and uh, looking at uh, the modulation of it. Uh, I guess it looks okay, good as it ever did anyway. And uh, this is after uh, some uh, little bench time on the Viking One. Nothing serious. It was just uh, cleaning up some stuff that I had neglected to do the first time around and put some feet on the cabinet. This thing uh, didn't have any feet at all. And so, you know, you moved it on the table and it was like, you know, a major scratching as the uh, steel cabinet just ground the finish off of the table. So I put some, uh, I put some good stout uh, uh, feet on the, uh, on the cabinet and a few other things. And uh, we are running the D104, and it's a direct grid connection. You know, no amplifier. It's a crystal microphone with a 4.7 meg grid load resistor. So uh, yeah, we'll see what that uh, what that what that does. And uh, the receiver is the debut, sort of, sort of the debut of the uh, receiver that took two part sets two different part sets to actually get the third receiver to be a decent receiver. And that's the uh, National NC-183D, the uh, Delta version. And so, uh, yeah, I'm telling you, uh, sometimes it gets a little bit, uh, you know, striving for perfection. And of course, it's never achievable. 
but anyways, uh, it's a much better version uh, now than it was oh, a year or so ago. So anyway, yeah, but it took two part sets. For that, let's uh, shoot it on over to Bill. N6 BCT WA7 YBS.
because they were so rusty and had to take them to a sandblaster, blast, blast, blast it, and then primed them off, uh, and then painted them gray the first time through, and uh, I thought it was going to have to do gray, and then this TCZ-1 transmitter in really nice shape showed up, so, uh, and it was black, black wrinkle, so then I decided, well, we're going to go back to black wrinkle, and that's what we did. So that's what's going on here, still working on the TDE, uh, still cleaning, and I had some rusty stuff uh, in the power supply. There was a couple of brackets that were holding the, there's a, like a uh, switch matrix, a manual matrix of stuff for switching configurations for different voltages and things. The brackets that hold that were all rusty. So I took one of the brackets off, cleaned it all up, and then painted it, and then painted it, and then the paint came out looking real nice. But now i got to do the other one. And it's nuts and bolts, kind of hard to get to. I've given a little blood to the project, and again. So uh, there's progress on the TV as well. And so we will keep it moving. Where are we? W6SSP, WA6OPE. Okay, thank you, Tom. Hey, I'll tell you, the uh, TCV, I think I heard that right, Tango Charlie Victor. Not familiar with that one. I'm familiar with the TCB, so I might have heard wrong. Anyway, sounds good, whatever you're running. And uh, everybody's sounding very, very good today. Uh, especially Bill. Bill was, I think, the strongest I've ever heard him. Uh, propagation seems to be favoring a uh, local San Francisco Bay Area at least from my location, uh, but unfortunately uh, the sun must have hit the uh, neighbor's solar panels and uh, from the uh, pre-net warm-up uh, till now, uh, noise flow up from S2 to S6+, plus. the propagation is good, so hearing everybody, for now at least. Anywho, this is Steve, uh, W6SSP, just north of Santa Rosa. Running the usual Collins, uh, classic Collins, uh, 75A1 receiver, uh, 32V1 transmitter was a, with a blazing 85 watts out. That's a uh, resonant uh, dipole about 30 feet up, uh, D104 microphone. Uh, let's see, I, I think we'll just keep it moving. Send it back up to Chuck. K0DWC, W6SSP. Okay, Steve. Uh, W6SSP, K0, DWC. All right, all right, very good. Everybody's coming in just fine. Bill Bill was uh, surprisingly strong uh, with that first transmission there. Uh, Q5 copy all the way. Of course, everybody else is shaking the, shaking the dust off the windowsill, but uh, uh, good copy all the way around. Um, yeah, I think that, that, I think Tom was saying that that's a, a, a Tango Charlie Zebra. TCZ uh, transmitter, which is a really cool setup, man. That's <laughs> those things are hard to find. I don't even think I've ever seen one in uh, in person. But uh, uh, Tom, great job uh, at least getting that thing on the air. Congratulations on that. I know you said you had a little bit of uh, uh, work to do uh, body work wise and all and paint wise, but uh, hey, it. Uh, the test evidently went good, and uh, boy, that's a uh, that's impressive. I, I I can't wait to hear that when uh, when you finally get it all done and get all the bugs out of it and everything. And uh, that'll be really neat to uh, to uh, hear that on the air. And uh, uh, Ron, uh, I was I was listening earlier. I, 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 sorry about your neck problem there with the with the fuse having to fuse the disc there. That's that's terrible. Oh man, that's terrible to have to go through that. But uh, anyway, I know you'll be the soldier that you are and tough it out. So, uh, <laughs> but I, I hate that when that happens to somebody. That's that's awful. But I know you'll get through it. And um, Mike, uh, the, the antenna problem. Um, you know, it, everything pointed to uh, operating on a single leg of the dipole. And I checked some stuff out, and everything seemed fine. So I had to think about it for a while, and I, I was at a loss, too. And um, I went back about, I don't know, three or four hours after the net was over. And I'll be doggone, I went and 
fired everything up, and that thing tuned perfectly. I didn't have to do nothing. I, I couldn't believe it. I, I don't think I could ever recall that ever happening to me. The only thing, I, I asked Henry about this too, but we're not sure, because I talked to him about it on the phone, because I was bewildered. The only thing I can figure is, is uh, that parts of that antenna froze, because it was pretty cold, really cold that day, or that morning, and it was snowing, and uh, I did go out there and knock the, so the snow off of it, but uh, evidently there must have, been, must have frozen some spots. Because after it warmed up, it came, it dialed right back in. So that's the story on the antenna. But everything pointed to operating on a single leg. Initially, that's what I thought I was going to have to do: is take it down and uh, refit it or refix it and uh, check it out again. But that, that's what happened there. So uh, a mystery. So anyway, um, <laughs> uh, let's see if there's anybody out there who wants to be number eight uh, on the tail end of the first round. Uh, come now. Okay, nothing heard. So, uh, anyway, with that, we'll go ahead and we'll start round two. Uh, let's see, just real quick. Let's see, Mike, TCS 11 is pounding in. Ron, the TCS, yours is pounding in. Dave's pounding in. Henry, the Viking 1 sounds really good, and, and that's great that you got it paired with the 183D. I know that's got to sound super with the speaker that you got. Uh, Bill, no problem. Really sounding good. Tom, you're pounding in here, and Steve's pounding in here. So that's that's my uh, audio report for all you gentlemen. So uh, with that, we will go up to the top to, I guess, the former voice of Reno. <laughs> W7MS in the group, K0DWC. Well, thanks, Chuck. That was a quick frequency check there. K0DWC in the uh, Sunday morning military net, W7MS. And I guess, uh, you know, where I, well, it's TCS day to a certain extent. And, uh, of course, comment when I check my frequency, transmit frequency, I think I'm down 2 hertz from where I started. And uh, just amazing the, uh, the build quality and engineering with the T TCS sets. And has been mentioned numerous times in the past, but it, it's always amazing because you have the habit of uh, checking frequency because you may have to do a touch-up. And I haven't touched it, touched the transmitter at all other than hitting the power switch this morning from the previous uh, time it was in operation. Uh, so great on the antenna issues. Uh, it'll blame Mother Nature. Uh, hard to say that any other explanation. And obviously if it was intermittent, connection with all the winds we have on the east slope of the Sierras, uh, it wouldn't be, it would certainly be an intermittent, it wouldn't be a uh, one and done, so I'm glad everything's working fine on your end and you didn't have to do any uh, any elevator work there for the antenna. And uh, of course Ron's doing great, uh, if I had an S meter of course he'd be pinning it. And uh, Dave, great to hear him this morning, and I'm sure he's still recovering from uh, lack of uh, of Mark and Spaces yesterday. And Henry, great on the Viking 1, and you now have, uh, now you're really official with the uh, with the feet, and you're not scratching the, uh, the desktop, so great on the updates on that. Good morning to Bill. Uh, Tom, great on the TCZ updates. Uh, did, uh, did see the pictures from the, uh, the radio uh, shack there, and uh, the one that intrigued me, which was a little later, post World War II, uh, World War II, was the Collins URC 32 that was prone on the pallet. <clears throat> that, uh, that that got my eyes, and it didn't look, and, and it wasn't even rusty or appeared to be damaged, other than the fact that uh, I could only imagine trying to drag that down from the uh, from the penthouse down to the ground floor, <laughs> even if you took the uh, rack shells out. But uh, that was. Uh, that caught my attention, so uh, good job on the updates and looking forward to hearing the TZ Zebra uh, on this uh, frequency or others sometime in the uh, in the near future when you're uh, when you're when you're satisfied with uh, with your uh, your restoration. And fine, Steve, on the usual stuff, doing well. And of course, the other irony I was thinking about, Tom, was when I was sitting in China Basin eating my apple fritters in the morning reading the, uh, was it the Examiner or the Chronicle, 
uh, that just a little bit to the uh, to the south where that that was that uh, penthouse radio room <laughs> over in Hunters Point. But of course, in that area, as I've said before, uh, my only interest in ham radio was the uh, I had ham plates, and I was mostly just trying to endure the uh, the uh, the commute and dealing with the Bay Area. But uh, it's all history, and uh, you only remember the good times, not the bad times, in that area. And uh, projects here, I was thinking about getting the weird uh, on this morning uh, so I could mystify people and have them head to the internet. And that was the Collins uh, 32. Uh, Mike Sierra 1 Bravo, which was a commercial uh, transceiver from the 1960s, uh, ran uh, upper or lower sideband, uh, or uh, AME, but uh, single conversion, 2 to 18 megahertz, 4 channel, crystal controlled, blah, blah, blah. But the, uh, the one thing I hadn't considered was the fact when I originally uh, restored it, I was using the, uh, it had optional 12, volt DC, 24 volt DC, or 110 AC supplies. It was a commercial transceiver of many purposes, whether it be a vehicle, aircraft, ship, <laughs> or fixed station. Uh, what a what an operation. But I had, in the meantime, uh, from the 12 volt supply, uh, supply I had uh, moved it over to uh, a DC, uh, an AC powered supply, which makes it much, uh, much more comfortable. No reason to have to power it from a uh, from an Astron or whatever, but I, I fail to realize the, uh, the in the switching mode it's running at a much higher frequency, which would tend to mask any electrolytic filter cap issues. So I do have some hum on the carrier, so I wanted to address that because we don't want hum on the carrier, do we, John? Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, so we'll uh, we'll roll out the 32 MS1B sometime in the future with a 30S1, but uh, that uh, that project yesterday didn't go anywhere for another. Uh, uh, tale of uh, running a weird radio, but uh, we'll uh, get around to that in the next couple of weeks. So, uh, over to Ron, NU6F, W7MS. Okay, a pregnant pause. Anybody else there? Well, I guess this is not going to be a record net with lots of people. Well, good deal on all. Uh, great copy and... Uh, no QRN, uh, the airwaves are clear, the, uh, <clears throat> the Zephyr winds have blown out the, uh, the QRN, actually I've been kind of surprised, it's been like the last three Sundays, uh, uh, I almost thought I had antenna issues, but no, no, we just, uh, I don't know what happens to all those mystery wall warts and everything else that everyone has that just clobber the airwaves, but uh, uh, knock on wood. And uh, Tom, good deal on the uh, the TCZ's maiden voyage, and I assume that means the uh, the 1100 volts and the 866s were uh, were working just fine, and you didn't have any really bad stuff there. I know. Remember, you said the uh, the low voltage stuff was working. So, wow. Okay. And uh, there you go. So when, uh, <clears throat> you know, Steve, SSP, when the XYL says, you're never going to get around to that thing. Steve, you've had that thing out there for, for 21 years. You can always say, well, Tom just finished his. And everyone said it wouldn't get done, and it did. So if Tom can do it, so can I. There you go. And, uh, Bill, yeah, uh, good strong carrier, uh, still the audio issue, but, uh, Bill, you need to change your, uh, change your station particulars. You always say 25 watts of, uh, carrier. You know, uh, spice it up next time and make it 24 or 26 watts. Just so, uh, it doesn't sound like it's a canned, uh, a uh, can station. You gotta have a little bit of variability. And uh, Henry, good deal on the uh, the <coughs> maiden receiving uh, with the NC183D. And do I sound better than normal with the uh, new improved 183? Don't know. Um, and yeah, for the D104 mic direct, 
Uh, I think you said it's an un unamplified, so just the ceramic cartridge. Uh, yeah, there's no, speaking of hum, there's, it's either you've got a, a three inch shielded mic cord or uh, uh, there's just no hum. So even with the uh, four or five meg uh, grid resistor, why it sounds, uh, it sounds like it's, it's not picking up anything other than your voice. And uh, Dave, okay, on the uh, the TCK extra noises, yeah, um, I know I'm really in tune with the noises from the MG set on the TDE, and Tom, I, uh, yeah, I, I got you on that same bracket. I've had that off a couple of times when, uh, of course, that's when I ended up uh, seeing that the, uh, the uh, 115 volt, uh, secondary that one was open so uh, that's when I had to go ahead and replace it with my other transformer tucked out of the way so you can't see it and I left the, uh, the old one in there but uh, yeah well good deal on that so before long we'll even hear that thing purring along uh, and for here no radio projects whatsoever but uh, we uh, we made great progress on the uh, on the uh, the Dodge M37 over at Lucky Larry's place, he took the maiden voyage uh, with it uh, last week, and uh, it took a little bit of prompting, but uh, uh, yeah, it uh, he was well. We both were really encouraged. Transfer case works fine. Two wheel, four wheel, low, high. Uh, the rest, <laughs> it still doesn't have much of an idle. <laughs> You have to kind of, you have to kind of drag that parking brake all the time. But uh, I've been working on another carburetor uh, that uh, off of a civilian power wagon from 1950, and uh, it's similar enough. Would uh, at least to go ahead and pop it on there and verify that the problem is with this carburetor and no vacuum leaks, nothing else. So hopefully this week before. Uh, yeah, before we get the uh, spinal surgery, uh, yeah, because I won't be working on that vehicle afterwards, not uh, not for a long time, but uh, yeah, so I'm hoping to get this other carburetor popped on there and at least verify it's uh, maybe just a clogged passageway in the castings for his uh, the idle on that M37, but yeah, so now if anyone knows where we can get some... Uh, some cheap 916 14 ply tires uh four of them at less than two thousand dollars why uh, let me know <laughs> just like most of these projects you have just enough success to sucker you into spending more money but yeah we're going to miss the darn uh, plymouth uh, vehicle show where we could have gotten some leads on stuff because i'll be uh, I will be uh, just a few days post-surgery with that, and I won't be able to be uh, be driving for uh, you know two to four weeks. So that'd be the only bummer out of it all. Okay, with that, <clears throat> down to uh, down to Livermore, <clears throat> the RT13 and the R390A, W6MQI and U6F. All right, left the uh, pause there, heard somebody tuning up while you were uh, talking there, Ron. Yeah, you got a lot going on, a lot going on. Yep, 2000 bucks for a set of tires. <laughs> <coughs> they know they got you. Such a niche market, they know they got you on that one. But uh, I've seen that stuff for sale, just kind of looking around, so it's out there. Uh, let's see, yep, slept in yesterday, didn't do the clatter net, I've been, uh, I've been working on this shed on the side of the house, pretty much got her done, I need to get a front door built, um, Friday I got the roof, put the shingles on the roof, and not more than be a half hour after I got the roof done, we had a hailstorm come through here. <laughs> So that was perfect timing, and it didn't leak, so that's good too. But uh, what else? Not so. That's about all I've been doing here is working on that shed. No ham projects. 
And uh, with regards to the, uh, the clatter net, um, yeah, it would be neat to have uh, the old uh, tail type equipment. Uh, unfortunately, I had some Model 15s way back when for Navy Mars. And just kind of going through, moving here, moving there. Finally got rid of them, getting sick and moving them around. Uh, so I don't have anything. I know that, that uh, Andy put out a post for there was a couple of free Model 28 ASRs, up, I guess in Concord somewhere. But uh, I don't have anything else. I don't have a TU unit. And then you got a sheet of paper. Where do you buy the paper? Where do you buy the tape? Where do you buy the, the ribbons? Maybe there's a spot that I don't know about. But uh, got to keep, keep those things fed. So unfortunately, I'm stuck with the computer using that for now. Um, I'm sure there's, a, like I said, I'm sure there's a, a stash of paper somewhere that somebody's, uh, somebody sells. But like I said, I've never, I've never seen it. I know there's a guy up there in Walla Creek that uh, you can buy teletype parts from. Um, in fact, I saw a YouTube video on him. He's got just about everything you can think of, it sounds like. He's probably even has paper. But uh, other than that, not much going on here. Uh, the band is uh, spooky quiet. It's really quiet. Um, everybody's signals are hanging in there, although uh, it's getting later in the day here, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, Steve, you uh, I was thinking about your uh, PRC 515 you were thinking about. I believe you have to have both units. You can't just run the, uh, the radio part. Uh, you got to have both units, the tuner, because the antenna is on the tuner side. So uh, you can't just run just the, uh, the radio. Um, I think you I think you had asked me that question anyway. But uh Yeah, they're they're neat little radios. Like I said, I had a few problems with mine at first. Luckily it was easily rectified and it's been a solid performer ever since. Uh I know that Andy had one and it quit just completely quit working. And there's a couple of fuses inside. I think I have a feeling that's what's gone uh, bad on his. Um that probably uh, need replacing. So, but anyway, again, not much else going on here. Um, let's see, uh, Chuck. Yeah, that's a strange, uh, strange situation with your antenna there. I wonder. If, I wonder if you do have like maybe. A, I don't know how your your feed lines attached to your antenna if it's soldered directly like mine is. But uh, I wonder if you got some kind of funky uh, cold solder joint. So you're losing one leg when it freezes. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that's a that's a weird one. So anyway, over to uh, to Henry W7YBS W6MQI. Okay, W6MQI W7YBS, and okay, I think I. Oh, oh, here. Oh, he's got a tweak and peak. Okay. Uh, everybody sounds great. And uh, no problems. The problem uh, that Chuck and, and I both have uh, is this uh, uh, 450 ohm, you know, sort of open feed line that really isn't open. It's, it's jacketed with this black plastic crap. And when that gets wet, especially when you've got a long feed line, 100 feet or something like that, uh, it really changes the capacitance of that uh, uh, feed line, and it detunes the antenna. And that's what happens. And of course, if it's ice, you know, that gets on there, it's, you know, that, that is really a problem. You've got to wait for it to melt off. But, uh, yeah, for years of running this type of feed line, the black jacketed 450 ohm stuff, uh, yeah, if it gets wet, you know, it, it changes everything. So uh, that's the uh, 
that's the rundown on that uh, running that type of antenna up in the Sierra. Anyway, one of the advantages, I guess, of running coax is you don't have that problem. So anyway, we'll see. Oh, model 28 ASRs. I had one of those one time when I was up in Virginia City. It was huge. Absolutely the biggest teletype machine around. And heavy. I left it when I moved down here to Dayton. I left it for the guy that I sold house to up there in Virginia City. He collected antiques and he had some, you know, he, he liked that kind of stuff. So uh, I was able to leave that uh, 28 ASR up in Virginia City. And uh, so, anyway, that was that. And uh, Ron, you sound great on the 183D. In fact, bike sounds fabulous on the 183D. And, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the 183, the straight 183, actually has better fidelity. It, you know, it's, it's not narrowed down so much. This one has the, uh, uh, the double IFs, you know, kind of a tertiary connection for the IFs in there. The bandwidth is uh, respected at, at 3.5 kc. I have that with on the 183D. It's about 6 or 7 KC or so on the 183. And so the 183 actually, audio wise, sounds much better. Uh, you know, and of course, both of them respect uh, 20, 20 hertz on the low end, up to 13 kilohertz on the upper end audio. It is high fidelity and it is push pull 8 watts of audio. So, yes, you do sound. Very nice. And uh, Chuck, I'm not using that big speaker. Uh, the big speaker is, uh, goes with the 183. And this, I have it, an original 10-inch, uh, oh, they called them, uh, they, were, they were the matching speaker anyway, and that gunmetal silver 10-inch, you know, the typical national speaker. And it's a pretty good speaker. Uh, one other thing, those of you that can get on the internet uh, might want to check out WA7YBS on QRZ. I put a new picture up. It's a dandy. And uh, so anyway, I have a new login picture there for you to take a look at QRZ and go to WA7YBS. It's a, it's a pretty funny one. So anyway, uh, with that, let's shoot it on over to Bill. Oh, I wanted to comment on that TCC. Yeah, that's cool. That because uh, that's an ART13 on a power supply pedestal. Uh, it may be uh, set up very nice. And you know, as I've mentioned before, I saw the gray one that uh, that N7 UVZ had there, Chuck McClurg in Carson City. But that Paul has now uh, N6 FEG. Uh, Paul has that one. So. It is around. It is somewhere. Uh, so with that, over to Bill in 6 bct wa 7 ybs Quite a bit of what you said. 
so uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's see. Speaking of modulation, Mike, uh, oh, I don't know about PCS. I wonder if you're using an audio chain or not. Uh, it sounds excellent. Uh, boy, if that's a deal where you just plug a mic in, you know, a copper mic, I'm not going to believe it, but I think you've got to be going through an audio chain. What a quick break. Is that true? Oh, I'm here. Uh, okay, got the amp on. No, actually, it's the uh, LM386 audio uh, amplifier driving the uh, carbon mic transformer. And the microphone's an amplified D104 W7MS. Oh, thank you. Well, anyway, it sounds absolutely perfect. Perfect. Yeah, just right. Nice and plenty of modulation and uh, uh, no distortion, no nothing, no nothing, and really good frequency response for voice intelligibility. And there's a low end there, so sounds great. And let's see, what else was I going to comment about? Oh, Ron, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, sorry to hear about the pending operation and driving Miss Daisy and all that crap that's going to be coming up. But, but good to hear that you guys got that M37 uh, actually running and driving. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> and a ton of work. And now, too bad you can't make it to Plymouth because uh, that's the place, boy, if you needed a part of like a carburetor or any kind of a part for an M37, that's the place. That's coming right up in a couple of weeks. Uh, but I'll be there. Uh, I'm going to try and sell some surplus stuff. And uh, get rid of some stuff, maybe, hopefully. That's a place for military radio stuff. Um, it's a fairly older crowd, too, so even World War II stuff sells there. And that's, uh, although I'm going to be taking a GRR-5 uh, up for sale. And one of many that are populating my basement. And it actually works. And in fact, that's one of the ones that I had to redo the power supplies. Uh, proper capacitors and some other stuff in each one of the power supplies. But, uh, let's see, I did two of them. Well, I did one for somebody else, and uh, he's still a happy guy. And then I did one for Andy, and he's still a happy guy. And then I did two more, but I've still got both of those. I don't know if I know. So it's a of the use, but uh, what's really amazing about those receivers for uh, constants, the one that I have in the house, running on 120 volts AC. Uh, well, I put that thing on uh, 20 meter uh, W1AW, or uh, 14047. And uh, I turn it on, and it, uh, there it is. If, if propagation is good, there's W1AW. And I turn it on, about three days later, turn it on, there it is. Just absolutely amazing. Don't have to touch it. And it, uh, uh, audio-wise, I think it's the BFO. Uh, a slight tone change here and there, but other than that, the damn thing is rock steady. I can't believe it. And, uh, <laughs> not much of a receiver. Very, uh, nice and stable. But, um, uh, pretty broad, of course, but not terrible like World War II stuff. But, uh, uh, you know, no bells and whistles, and I mean nothing. But they, uh, are not impressed. I'm not impressed, that's for sure. Boy, the dial light, what a joke that is. They've got a little drum little bell down there, and then they've got a little lucite tube that's supposed to channel the light bulb up to the dial. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, so, uh, let's see, what else was I going to comment on? Uh, I think that's about it, actually. I think this is, uh, uh, conditions have been pretty good, although I did notice that uh, N6BCT was right in the noise this time. The previous transmission was nice and loud, but uh, not this time. So I think the band may be going out. So I will, uh, say 73 and, uh, turn it over to Steve. Maybe talk to you all next week. I'm a 6 O P E.
Okay, Tom, 73, good to hear you on. Sounds like you're keeping real busy with stuff, which is always a lot of fun. <laughs> this is a great hobby. Having a lot of toys to play with is, uh, is a big part of it. So, Anyway, comments, a whole bunch of comments. Uh, first of all, Ron, uh, I was listening uh, before the net about your upcoming surgery and uh, best wishes for that. You know, the good thing is I did identify the problem and your surgery is only, I think, nine, you said nine days away. That's good, you don't have to wait a long time. And it sounds like your surgeon is excellent with uh, something like 2,000 operations under his belt. So uh, that's really good news. Um, and boy, I'll tell you, I'm a big believer in uh, MRIs uh, over CAT scans or anything else. Uh, I go in once a year now. I'll come, I'm coming up in a couple of months for another one. Just to double check things, because uh, I tell you, it's, I, I think that should be part of the uh, preventive maintenance schedule for everybody. But it's still expensive, so uh, maybe when cost comes down, that will uh, that'll change a little bit. And you know, uh, <laughs> restoring uh, restoring old vehicles is uh, of any kind. It's an expensive proposition, and boy, I'll tell you, you can get sucked in so easily. I can't tell you how many times I picked up a car for peanuts, you know, $200, 300 400 dollars and uh, spent years finding parts for it, and thousands and thousands of dollars. <laughs> I still have a car that's worth $400 at current rates anyway. Uh, but I was very fortunate this past week to find a, uh, a very rare uh, master brake and clutch cylinder for a 62 MG budget. And uh, in the past, uh, they've been about $420 and, uh, for more. And I think those have probably dried up. Well, it turns out uh, there's an outfit in Taiwan, which is a British colony, and they're making them now. So I got one for $99 shipped. And it looks perfect. Can with all the seals and pistons and everything. So I'm a happy camper there. For once, a, once in a while, you do get, you do find a good deal on classic cars. And Dave, yeah, good luck uh, with your TCK and finding the hum. You know, sometimes it's just a matter of a loose bolt on a transformer or something like that. Other times it's more serious, but, uh, you know, transmitters are pretty basic and you can usually find these problems uh, in short order. And you know, um, I, I was kind of like you. I had model 15s and 14s and 19s for many, many, many years, starting from the early 70s. And when glass teletype came in, I gave all that stuff away. Well, a number of years ago, I put a few years ago, I decided to start collecting them again. And you saw a few of them when you were here. And uh, I still like them. They're just kind of fun to watch uh, running. And they, they work really well, amazingly well, especially the 15s. So anyway, they're a kick. Paper is available. Um, you can still get uh, the... Uh, the ink, um, sorry, the, uh, the ribbons, and old ribbons can be resurrected. I found a trick of uh, just putting in a drop of uh, automatic transmission fluid and letting it soak in, that will reactivate the ink, and I've used uh, the same ribbon for years that way. Uh, and the fellow in the East School with those parts is called Paul Cambria. He probably still has paper and, uh, and uh, other uh, little parts you need if you ever decide to go that way. I did pass on a tip to Andy about the two model 28s uh, he had for free, and I haven't heard back of uh, whether they went to somebody else or not. But he was in the East Bay as well, so they were easy for him to pick up, and I know he has an interest in teletype, even though he's not a man. So I hope he got him. And uh, yeah, thanks for the info on the PRC 515. Probably not going to go out and buy one, but uh, sometimes I enjoy just poking around the net, looking up some of the things you guys have talked about, and, and uh, educating myself just in case I come across something. I hope it's more often than, uh, than you'd expect. And let's see what else. We have standard project this week, uh, another breadboard transmitter. And uh, this one is, is kind of a bad bug. I found a uh, design from early. Uh, issue of ER using a really weird, you know, Chris Rossler uses a pair of triodes, uh, dual triodes, 
And so I cobbled one together and it works beautifully. It works very, very well, better than I expected. And the neat thing about it is the output of that uh, oscillator will drive a push-pull power amplifier directly. So, anyway, I'm about part of the way through that right now and uh, hopefully get that done before the Sonoma swap at the end of the month. We'll see how that goes. Anyway guys, uh, propagation still is pretty good, but North Shore is getting is way up, so I'm only hearing about half the folks these right now. So I'll say 73 as well, and 75 for the time. Only at site for carrying by far. 40 DWC, W6SSB, 73 oh. 73, k 6 VXY checking in a little late. Okay, Vern, I've got you in the, uh, well, I'm going to put you in the 8 spot, uh, Vern, K6VXY. Uh, uh, go ahead and make a transmission and uh, uh, send it back up to me, K0DWC. Uh, K6VXY, go ahead. Okay, thanks for, I'm writing down people. I've been listening for a little while. Uh, I'm running uh, less power today, let's see. Uh, 25, 30 watts. Anyhow, um, had a lot of snow here, big news report. This winter, I can't remember, I've got it written down and I'm not near it, but we didn't have a whole lot of snow. And uh, oh, it was K6VXY for ID, over in California, just running barefoot, uh, the uh, IC7200. And uh, my antenna got up a little higher after the snow stopped. It, for some reason, that scared me a little bit. I pulled on it, and it was going up easy. I said, uh-oh, something got squirreled, right? But no, it uh, just went up nice and easy. And I'm planning this week to put um, a um, two more sections. One is going to be what I guess is a steel, something they use for electric fence. A wire thing that's real thick that'll be in the middle to hold it up and then the other end will have a number 10 gauge uh, copper wire so it'll be all not proof but we got a lot of snow and uh, since I'm at the right spot here everybody can hear me hopefully I'm curious about our snow my wife is from back east and she was raised in upstate New York and then Syracuse later on and uh, I couldn't believe what happened. The first day, which would have been, let's see, this is Sunday, Friday, we had about six inches of snow on the ground, six and a half inches or close to it. Then Saturday, three and a half inches more new snow. And uh, I had a good measuring tool, which was a, a table in our uh, porch area, open right to the snow, it's about four feet across. And I just put a ruler down in and measured it that way. I guess that's, that's my official reading of the rain, but not a lot of rain. But what was weird was that the Friday snow was pretty much all melted and you could go down the driveway on Saturday, which is strange. And then Saturday's snow, which was yesterday morning, was there, three and a half inches or so, making the total right there 10. Uh, it melted during the day. I said, that's weird. And all the snow, there was a ton of snow on the roof was gone. And the highest temperature has been about 40 degrees. And uh, maybe 45 at the most, the sun was out. And she says, well, if the snow is light, you know, it's not real uh, wet snow, a light snow, that can melt pretty quick. And I was shocked, because I made a snowball out of it the first day. I was just able just to crunch some of the snow that was on the little it's a short three-foot fence that goes around our patio and make a snowball and throw it. It was easy. But uh, that's the uh, snow report was weird. Now, this last week, as far as electronic project, was huge. Not ham radio, but something so close to it is uh, audio, which was my background. I decided because the, uh, I guess it's Microsoft, maybe Apple, somebody, they put all these copyrights on the uh, on the CDs that you paid for, won't let you copy them, and they make everything come out MP3. I said, that's ridiculous. I'd like to be able to have the full wave audio like I used to have, and then I started shopping on eBay for a recorder, and it was a Philips 785 model. It's one that has three discs on the left side that play. It also has a wonderful uh, optical.
electrical input, and then um, on the output side, on the right side, is where your recorder is. And you have to use what they called, if you guys remember years ago, they had what they called music CDs. You have to have those kind of discs. I'm not sure what's on them, but I was able to get a bunch of those off eBay, and I waited to make sure everything worked, which was yesterday. I took a ride in the car, and I'm able to uh, tape stuff off uh, YouTube. Uh, you have to be careful there. Some of it is copyrighted, so you lose the first few seconds, but on a four or five, uh, even longer, recording it's no big deal and uh anyhow that that's been a great project the thing looks brand new it was well taken care of they shipped it in a box that was probably uh let's see i'd say about 20 inches wide 20 inches high and 20 inches deep and packed with all kinds of popcorn and bubble wrap so that's why it uh it survived the trip i guess anyhow uh, good morning to uh Mike and uh, Tom and Steve, I guess, I don't know if y'all see you. Mike, your audio was unbelievable. I think that's when I tuned in. So I'm going to go back up to net and uh, to K0 DWC, and I'm number eight, and I'll copy down everybody else that I missed, but hello to all. Um, uh, and that's, uh, that's it. But the snow melting, and the project was great. Uh, step by step, uh, check out that recorder. The thing is, you never know what you're going to get on eBay sometimes, but Anna thinks choice, and now I can I can uh, get some music. Uh, I think the copyrights out, a little comment, is they've gone to the point where they're protecting you from yourself. You work, well, no, it's very hard for me to retire. I got a lot of it, this stuff I replaced from the buyer. But it's good quality stuff, and I don't want it to every MP3 compresses all the music. So anyhow, back to you, uh, excuse me, uh, Chuck. Thanks for letting me in. I guess I'm close to the 73 round. I really slept last night. Uh, the, and the group. Uh, this is K6 uh, VXY. Okay, Burn. K6 VXY. Uh, good signal, Burn. Uh, the band is starting to move a little bit, but uh, anyway, let me make a call out, see if there's anybody else out there that wants to be on the tail end of the second round, be number nine. Now come now. Okay, nothing heard. So um, uh, Tom and Steve have signed, and uh, so Bill, N6BCT, when, you, when you're done, You'll hand it to Burn, K6VXY. So, uh, let's see here. Seven threes to Tom and to Steve. And uh, we'll go ahead and go back up to the top and we'll do the uh, seven three round. Uh, so, uh, with that, we'll go back up to W7MS. Uh, Mike in Reno, go ahead. Well, thanks, Chuck. Uh, K0DWC, W7MS, and uh, thank you for the... Uh, Positive comments on the audio here from the uh, TCS-11, gray in color, <laughs> and silk screen. But uh, interesting. And seven threes to uh, well, actually, essentially it's seven three rounds, so we we'll just cover everyone when it comes time. But uh, comments here, yeah, on the PRC five one five. Don't forget, Dave, that the uh, the the PA is also located on that side of the uh, device with the uh, antenna coupler. So there's more to that. Plus, there's digital uh, uh, handshaking and uh, interlocks. So. Uh, essentially, unless you're uh, astute, as Steve would be, to defeating the interlocks, so you, it's uh, probably not uh, not advisable. Other than that, it's uh, extra spare modules for the uh, 515 transceiver. But uh, let me see here. Uh, yeah, Henry. Yeah, he was commenting on the wet uh, ladder line, but I would think that it's uh, probably has a greater effect on velocity of propagation. Yeah, that's being disturbed, but we'll uh, we'll await for uh, for comments since the insulation is already affecting uh, the velocity of propagation. But it's uh, it's only amateur radio, right? But uh, let me see. Uh, really, not much else to say. I'm going to keep it short here and say seven threes to everybody. It's great to hear the updates. 
in project-related activities, uh, Mother Nature there. Oh, and of course, uh, good morning to Vern. My apologies. Uh, great on burning CDs. Uh, MP3s are obsolete. Uh, the new digital standard for streaming is FLAC, F-L-A-C, which is a much improved, I hate MP3 audio. It sounds like crap Ola, in my opinion, but that's only my opinion. But uh, we'll keep it rolling, see if uh, Ron's still here, because he has to get going, but he still may be here for the adios round. So, 7 threes from Reno, NU6F, W7MS. Well, I believe over to you, Dave. Uh, Ron's off to church, W7MS. Okay, Mike. Yeah, the 515. Yep, they definitely have to be connected together. There's a lot going on between the two of them and the PAs in that unit and stuff, so, yep. And, uh, and I concur on that uh, window line. Uh, when it gets wet, I realize that's what you are running. Uh, Chuck, I thought you were running coax. Um, here's a guy around. Acquired some 300 ohm uh, ladder line. <laughs> it worked great when it was dry out. I mean, as soon as you even got some dew, it seemed like. You might as well turn the radios on. Because you're not tuning it up. So. Probably the best option to go away from my window line just go regular ladder line. Probably think you, I don't think you'll have the problems. Although with the snow, I don't know. Maybe it could bridge across. But uh, with wolf, with rain, and I don't think regular ladder line would have the problem, but I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, 73, everybody. Yep, propagation's changing. And uh, <clears throat> while I was waiting to, for my turn around, I turned the TCK back on, and it's cracked. So whatever's in there, uh, yeah, don't know. Causing the noise didn't didn't do it this time, so I'm gonna keep an eye on it and see what happens here. Anyway, see you through everybody, and uh, touch you guys next week. Um, over to over to Henry WE7YBS W6MQI. Okay, Dave W6MQI WA7YBS. <coughs> okay. Coughing to the microphone, that's always good. And, uh, okay, yeah, you know, uh, uh, a long time ago I made uh, the open feed line with bare copper wire and uh, lucite spreaders. I made the spreaders myself. And that didn't, uh, without the plastic jacket on there, so that. Uh, that line could get wet. It didn't really change that much. Same way. So I think the uh, the black, the plastic jacket is the main culprit in that. Yeah, it's uh, who knows what it is, but hey, when it gets wet, it's bad news. And uh, so with that, yeah, and on the modulation of the uh, Viking one, you know, it looks weird on the uh, the monitoring scope looks different than, the, let's say, the 32V3. Uh, 32V3 has lots and lots of mid-range. Uh, this, uh, I can't turn the audio up anymore. It's on about five and a half now uh, because the negative peaks, you know, the flat lines uh, on the modulation. And so I think I got, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards maybe that 5 meg resistor, 4.7 meg resistor that I put as a grid load uh, might be the culprit. You know, it emphasizes the lows too much, and because of that, your mid-ranges can't develop, and, uh, and, and so that might be the problem with the audio. And, uh, but we'll do that another time. So with that, I would more to burn. Better late than never burn. So uh, good to hear you. 73 all. And we'll turn it over to Bill, if Bill can hear me. N6BCT WA7YBS. Uh, 
Yeah, go ahead, Burns. Okay, yeah, let's see how much time. Hey, get the rifle. There the oh, there he was some watch. Not a lot of power, but um, yeah, it was surprising the way my antenna went up. This K6VXY variety. I wrote all the calls down. I heard just about everybody, but then you were signing. I'm sorry, I'm late. I uh, I got to sleep last night around. About uh, 9 o'clock, that's weird. And I uh, actually fell asleep watching uh, Sven Gulli. That's uh, one of my favorite shows. Uh, I taped it and I was watching it later. And it was the time travel uh, story was made. They said, wow, you know, this is, technology has changed here. We're 107 years in the future in the year 2071. Let's see, do the math. That movie was made in 1964. And then they had the mutants against the regular people. There was nuclear war. There was a lot of talk about nuclear war back then, in those days, you know, that uh, we're going to have it. I, maybe we got talked now. I guess we don't do too much political. I hope we either won't, but uh, it's getting a little weird out there. Anyhow, um, this K6VXY, nice to hear you all, and uh, letting me in come, come in late. And uh, I'll be doing some more work. and. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, I have been collecting some of the old stuff in audio and in ham radio, and I learned my lesson, too, uh, in this last year. If they got something for sale that I need for a unit that I own, buy more. There ain't going to be any more out there in about six months or a year from now. So I'm going to get a couple of these. Uh, they have their 10 packs of the Maxell Music CD, and they got, they're in the case, and they got the little cover on it, which is nice. That's handy to have that. So it'll be a, kind of a backup stock. But I'm very happy with it. I didn't quite get what Mike said. He said it quick. I have to look into that. But if you're there, I just have a question uh, for Mike. Uh, what is that standard now? And I'll look that up and learn about it. But yeah, I got, I had a bunch of uh, records up there in Paradise. I picked up a direct to disc. And, uh, of course, I have my rock and roll stuff, too, and some of the disco stuff is, uh, I got some 12-inch stuff, that's what I taped. Uh, that through the audio, in, I'm sorry, the optical input right off of uh, YouTube into my machine is fantastic. It's bright, it's, it's uh, now disco is compressed to begin with, but it's just, it's just clean and clear and crisp. It sounds really good if you like that sort of thing. And I'm kind of thinking of save a few of these disco songs so after my knee surgery next month, maybe I can get back and do that. I, I did like disco. A lot of people frown at that, but I, there's something about that steady beat that I think that's what attracted me to rock music originally. And I'm going to try and pick up some Mannheim steamroller. I love that music. That, that is great. Anyhow, so that's enough on there, and, and, and nice to hear you all, and thanks for letting me in. And good morning to Henry, and uh, good morning to uh, uh, Livermore, uh, MQI, and uh, Dave, and uh, let's see, and I hear BCT pretty good. So back to net, and I'll try and be on time next week. Oh, this is bad, but uh, it's nice to hear you guys again. Um, 
kind of like a family in a way, you know, uh, to check in into this, like some of the local nets uh, here at the Tuolumne County Amateur Radio uh, Club. So I got to try and ch see if anyone's on from Lark anymore. Let's get on Monday night and see if there's something down there. So back to you, uh, uh, Chuck. Uh, K0 DWC in the group. It's uh, K6 uh, VXY. Uh, nice uh, brief, but real nice QSO this morning. Uh, Mike, W7MS, would you like to answer uh, Burns' uh, question there? Well, I'm not quite sure uh, what he was addressing. I, I, I knew he had a question, but I didn't quite understand it. I'm, my apologies. Okay. Well, he he was talking about when you were uh, when you were talking about the uh, MP3 and the uh, I think I think you said it was Black F L A C. He was asking about that. Okay. Well, I guess it's it's just a Google search away, but it's uh, it's an improved, uh, much much improved as uh, digital formats have uh, rolled out over time. And I never did like MP3, the sound of MP3s and the compression issues, but that's just my opinion. And Chuck, thanks for saving me on that one, uh, W7MS. Okay, Mike, no problem. Uh, Burn, K6VXY, did you uh, did you get that uh, over? Yes, I got it. And that loud and clear, pure, good-sounding audio. Um, Hi-Fi AM. How's that? <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Back to you, Chuck. Okay. Yeah, Mike, great audio on that TCS-11. I mean, that thing sounds really good. <laughs> but, uh, okay, I'll, uh, I'll shut the net down. Uh, thanks, guys, for being there. Um, uh, because Henry took it the net two weeks in a row, I'm going to take it again next week on the 14th, and then Henry will be back on the 21st. And then I'll, that'll get us back on schedule. So I'll, I'll be your net control again next uh, next weekend. So uh, with that, uh, this is K0DWC, and I'll be securing the Binge Military Radio Net for today. And we'd like to thank everyone for their participation and invite everyone back next Sunday morning. So with that, uh, I'll say my seven threes. We'll turn the frequency back over to regular use. And uh, you guys take care. Have a good day and a good week ahead. We'll talk to you next weekend. This is k 0 DWC, Dayton, Nevada, signing.